activities affect objects. That means that objects frequently change their state during or as a result of some process or operation. When dealing with objects and how they're affected by a process, we refer to the object's state, and that state changes throughout the process. The state is similar to what a business subject matter expert might call the object's status. For example, think of a library book. Its status might be on shelf, borrowed, due, past due, on reserve, or lost. In an activity diagram, you can show the status or state of an object at various points in a given process. Objects affected by a process might include invoices, paychecks, reports, accounts, and so on. So here we have a very simple activity diagram that shows the flow of what happens when an order is received. Receive order, send invoice, receive payment, close order, and then we're done. Now at each step in this process, uh, the invoice object is going to be affected by the action that's happening, and the status of the invoice object might also affect the actions in the process. Let's look at what that means. You show an object with the object node, which is simply a rectangle, with the object's name, we'll type in invoice, and its state in square brackets. This is our first, right at the beginning of our process, so we'll use created as the state. So when the order is received, an invoice is created. We show the relationship between the action and the object using an object flow. As you can see uh, in this example, it looks just like a control flow. So the order is received, and this affects the state of the invoice. Invoice is created. The next step is send invoice. Now we can have flows coming into objects, we can also have flows going out of objects. Here, the invoice must be created before it can be sent. So we'll use an object flow to show that this state of the invoice object is necessary for the next action in the activity. And then the invoice is sent, how does that affect the invoice object? How does that affect its state? At that point, the invoice changes its state from created to pending, or due. And we'll draw our object flow to show that. After the invoice is sent and payment is received, again the invoice object changes its state to paid. And once again, this action is what changes the state of the object, so we have we put in the object flow.